In this tutorial we're going to talk about multitasking. So we're going to look at all the terms that go along with multitasking that you see here. We'll start with the concept of process and thread. So what we have here is a just a simple little program. And a program doesn't do too much, adds a few numbers, does a little bit of looping here, and eventually our program will get converted to a set of numbers that a CPU can execute. Roughly a thread has been defined as a unit of execution. And what we mean by that is just a bunch of numbers um, in a sequence that get executed by the CPU that do something. A process is loosely defined as an application. So something like Notepad or Word uh, would be an application. Now a process has to have at least one thread. That is something doing something. So the idea of a thread is just a unit of execution, a series of numbers that goes um, that the CPU can access and the CPU is going to execute them. A process is an application. Uh, processes are today generally multi-threaded. They have multiple threads. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But a process only needs to have one thread. Uh, in olden days something like Notepad would be a example of a single threaded application. Today things like Word and Internet Explorer or browsers are multi-threaded which means that they spawn uh, multiple threads when they do their tasks. For instance if you want to print a page in Word uh, that might spawn a new thread just to do the printing process. Meanwhile you might be editing a document in another thread. So that's the difference between a thread and a process and how they're related. We're going to look at multitasking and the first version of multitasking is, is a cooperative multitasking. And we're going to draw our threads as a, a little arrow just as it's so it's a sequence of commands here which are going to be eventually executed by our CPU. So we need the CPU to actually execute a thread. So we have maybe, and in a multitasking situation, we have multiple threads. The whole idea of multitasking is that it appears as if we're going to be executing multiple things all at the same time. Now that doesn't really happen. We only have a single CPU. So things are going to switch between threads so fast it's going to appear as if they're happening at the same time. Well, in a cooperative multitasking, we would have a thread, thread number one, and it would be executed by the CPU, and it would be up to the thread, that is, it would be up to the whoever programmed the sequence of instructions here to make sure they check every so often to see if there are any other threads in a queue. You can think of this as being a queue or a pipeline. You'll hear those terms used at times. That is ready to be executed. So a thread would voluntarily would voluntarily suspend its own execution and would allow execution to flow to uh, another application. So when that happens, this thread would suspend itself and we would have thread number two here, maybe from a different process, would have access to the CPU. This whole system of a thread voluntarily suspending itself is called cooperative multitasking because we need the cooperation of all the threads. The problem here, and so cooperative multitasking happened in operating systems like Windows 3, 
uh, all the OS versions from 1 to 9. And part of the problem with a cooperative multitasking is that if a thread has execute has uh, the the CPU to uh, execute, and sometimes um, there may be a bug in the program, and this just loops endlessly. Basically, it stalls or halts. What happens then is that it never gives up its uh, path to the CPU, and no other thread in the system can execute. And the only uh, way you can solve this problem is simply shut down the system and restart. But that's how multitasking was in the early days. Today, all operating systems use a version of multitasking called preemptive multitasking. And in preemptive multitasking, we have our same threads in a queue. And we'll show multiple threads here. And now there's some different parts to the thread. Threads have something called priority, which is basically a number assigned to the thread. And that priority um, is going to be used by another part of the preemptive multitasker. So we're just going to give this some priority numbers. Now the threads do not directly have access to the CPU there is another component in here and this component is called a scheduler. And the scheduler controls what threads have access to the CPU. And the first part of the scheduler is simply going to choose the thread with the highest priority. So thread with priority number eight is there's going to be a path, the scheduler is going to give it a path to the CPU to be executed. Now, if that's all that happened, then this thread would just get executed forever. But another part of the scheduler has the ability to change thread priority as well. So, a second part of the scheduler can boost thread priorities, especially for low priority threads that maybe haven't been executed. It can give them boosts so that eventually they will get executed. So if it boosts a thread priority to 9 here, then the scheduler will remove the path for this thread to the CPU and will make a path will make a path for this thread to have access to the CPU. Now, again, we could potentially have the same problem um, if we didn't have another mechanism in here. And a mechanism is that there is a clock or a timer, and this clock is ticking. And the clock has a certain interval called a time slice. And every time slice, the scheduler generally changes um, who has access to the CPU. So this thread down here may be executed right now, but after a time slice, X execution is halted, and there looks for another thread um, with higher priority, and it gives that, and if one of these threads has a boost, there may be another thread that's come into the queue with a higher priority, it gets access to the CPU. So the scheduler does two things. It looks at thread priorities and gives them access to the CPU. Uh, after a time slice it will remove access. So even if a thread here hangs, and even if it has a high priority, uh, execution will be taken away from that thread and given to other threads so that they can have access to the CPU. So that all threads get executed at some point. The second part or the second duty of the scheduler is to adjust thread priorities. Some threads will get adjusted up if they haven't executed. If they've had a lot of CPU time they may get adjusted downwards. And so that's the second purpose of the scheduler.
So together, this is the concept of preemptive multitasking. Now, Windows 95 started to use preemptive multitasking in all its 32 bit applications. Uh, Unix has had multitasking for a number of years, uh, preemptive multitasking, and this is one of the reasons why OS X decided to use the Unix kernel, which came from the next uh, computer system, as the foundation for OS X because of the um, strength of its multitasking system. So why would we want to use multi-threading? Well, the obvious example is to be able to open many applications on our desktop. So we might want to have a, a Word document that we're editing. We may also want to send a document for printing at the same time. Maybe we have a recalculate on a spreadsheet uh, that's happening in the background. So this allows us to work a little more efficiently. And also CPUs are becoming uh, more able to take advantage of multi-threading. And there's three examples where uh, CPUs have changed their architecture. One of the first ones is uh, in the core of a CPU. Uh, and the first examples is an example called hyper-threading. And hyper-threading is something that Intel has built into the hardware of their core and it has the ability to accept at the same time multiple threads. So we no longer have a, a thread needing a single CPU. We have um, what are called multiple cores or this hyper threading will allow two cores to enter it. Now if the cores are totally independent uh, it may be able to execute both threads at the same time. But for some things uh, if it needs access to what's called the ALU that needs to do a multiply, it may have to wait. So what Intel has done is to duplicate some of the core functionality here. Not all of it, but some of it. So it allows um, multiple, core, multiple threads to operate faster than if you just had uh, a core without hyper-threading. Now we go to another example which is called dual core and in dual core we have two cores which duplicate more of the processor. We may have um, two ALUs here and so this is a little more efficient at running multiple threads. So we have these multiple threads in our queue. One thread is sent to one core and one thread is sent to another core and much more of the thread can get executed before it may uh, have to share some type of resource which is in here for processing. And so multi-core is more efficient than hyper-threading. If you have hyper-threading with a single core, it actually shows up as two virtual CPUs. So if you are familiar with Windows and Device Manager and you look there, you'll actually see two CPUs listed even though it's two hyper-threaded um, components inside a core. Dual core um, the latest uh, uh, the latest processors out now are Ivy Bridge and they're multi-core. Most of them are quad-core uh, and that's what this means. These cores have much more ability to process uh, threads and so they're more efficient and you'll get better performance out of a dual core than you will from a single core that's hyper-threaded. To confuse things even further, you can have dual core with each core having hyper-thread components. So it almost looks like four cores, but it's not really a, a quad core. So you can have dual core, you can have hyper-threaded, you can have dual core with hyper-threading, which is some servers. The best of all of this architecture at at running is to actually have multiple processors and you can have on a motherboard multiple processors and now when you send one thread to one CPU can be fully executed one thread to another CPU so this type of architecture is often used in servers and um, 
the Xeon line of processors from Intel is designed to be run in a multiprocessor application. And this is called SMP or Symmetric Multiprocessing. So this is when you actually have multiple processors. It's the most expensive and it's the most efficient for executing multiple threads.